Japan's Rakuten Mobile has done as much as any company to promote the concept of open RAN architectures, technologies and operations during the past couple of years. But how is it getting on with its own deployment of disaggregated multi-vendor radio access network technology? Well, to find out, I'm talking today with Sushil Rabat, the operator's head of Open RAN platforms. Hi, Sushil. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, now, Rakuten is well known in the industry as a champion of Open RAN. Can you just remind us how Rakuten Mobile has deployed Open RAN in Japan? Thanks for that question, Ray. This was uh, mid-2018 uh, when, when the, the discussion of building network in Japan uh, started and our CTO and our CEO, uh, you know, CEO and chairman, uh, Miki Tanisan, uh, they, they were debating what, how to build the network, whether to go the traditional way or to go the open RAN way. And uh, uh, Miki is, is known for his, uh, you know, uh, out of the box approach and, and taking on on challenges so we decided to to do an open ran based uh, virtualized network in japan uh, back then open ran was still under the standardization stage uh, open ran ec standards was not finalized it was still under discussion and debates but but we had to start our network build out we were awarded the frequencies so we were, we were supposed to start our network build out in less than 6 months so we we sit together with with our partners. Uh, we we got good support from a lot of traditional vendor, including Nokia, Cisco, and uh, you know we we started building this network. So major problem for us back then was to solve this open interface problem for eCPRI. Uh, Nokia radios were all CPRI based, and uh, there was no standard for eCPRI. So we we worked with our partner Orchestar, which we recently acquired. We we started working with them. We developed the intermediate node, which could convert a standard CP into ECP. That was our first problem solving, where where we successfully integrated Nokia radios with Orchestar software, and that's that's where it all started. We we worked with Cisco. We deployed Cisco CBIM uh, cloud platform, which was predominantly OpenStack based. We started building network in, in February 2018. And toward the end of 2019, we were close to 10,000 sites. And uh, after that point, centralization uh, infrastructure that is required to do uh, E-Node B centralization or RAN centralization uh, started to show uh, limitations. Uh, even though Japan as a network is very uh, rich in terms of fiber infrastructure, get fi getting fiber to uh, every single corner of of the country was becoming a little more challenging and i would say more time taking so we also solved that those problems and developed product which could deploy uh enode b software near to the cell site uh, with with the help of such kind of hybrid architecture where you have centralized enode b and also have distributed enode b this gave us a a, a huge boost in, in network deployment in less than a year from then. Uh, we have today deployed uh, 30,000 eNode Bs across Japan for 4G and for 5G, uh, the auction was held in uh, 2019. And since then, we, we started building our own radios with, with partners like NEC, Qualcomm and, and Airspan. We successfully developed our uh, own product, uh, massive MIMO panels, uh, millimeter wave uh, uh, macro cells, and we have deployed today more than 2,000 sub-6 and uh, millimeter wave uh, sites uh, across Japan. Uh, we have re we have been recently uh, uh, benchmarked across all uh, uh, all the vendors in Japan, all the operators in Japan. We have uh, we are fourth operator. Uh, we have uh, for 5G speeds. We have we have been rated number one uh, across the globe. For 5G uh, network quality, uh, we have we have been ranked very high in in large operator groups. So, uh, and we have close to five million customer on our network today, which which shows how open RAN technology has helped us deploy our network and also uh, prove that open RAN technology can deliver to the promises of performance. 
And in terms of your network architecture, is it still only 5G that's Open RAN compliant or is uh, is 4G Open RAN as well? When we say Open RAN compliant, it is basically about uh, interface. Is it uh, fully, fully Open RAN certified or not? So our 5G uh, network is definitely uh, fully aligned with our with with Open RAN standard uh, interface for front hall. For 4G, uh, we have converted standard CPRI into eCPRI, which which I, as I said was not standardized back then. But on on principal architecture, it is still Open RAN because we do use uh, Nokia radios with AltiSR software, so we still have disaggregation. And we still have uh, that openness where we can mix and match hardware and software. So uh, principally, I would say we have Open RAN deployed for 4G and 5G both. So what are the main lessons that Rakuten Mobile has learned about Open RAN in the past year or so? Have there been any major surprises? Uh, there has been a lot of surprises and a lot of uh, problems that we faced uh, over the past few years. The, the major uh, challenges that we faced was about the ecosystem. Uh, three years back when we started de uh, deploying this network, uh, ecosystem was not as mature as it is today. Uh, so we, we had to work with, with various different partners, uh, invest into, into developing hardware, invest into developing different softwares and tool chains. I won't say these were surprises, but these were learnings. So we, we learned over the past few years, uh, we, we faced majority challenges with, with virtualization, oper operationalization of a virtual ecosystem. We, we started our network deployment with the uh, OpenStack based virtualization architecture. However, uh, over the period of time, we have further evolved from there and have adopted to a Kubernetes based architecture. Applications are much more slimmer now uh, they are much more faster and also scalable at the same time, which are uh, which are good surprises and good problem to solve that we did over the past few years. Uh, another few challenges, uh, as we discussed in the previous question, also is the infrastructure. Infrastructure to support uh, RAN virtualization, which also involves centralization of, of uh, the compute power. You require a lot of uh, fiber infrastructure, data center infrastructure, which which was uh, po uh, you know uh, posing challenges and uh, doing that kind of deployment uh, for a for a large country like Japan even even though we have strong fiber ecosystem it was becoming challenge at uh, you know beyond a point so we solved those problems also we we developed a hardware with our partners which basically take a standard compute server make it uh, harder it and make it more ruggedized and take the workloads to the cell site and make it uh, you know deployable to to all kind of use cases today our network uh, has been running on very hybrid architecture where we have uh, you know data center based uh, deployment for keynote bees and also have a cell site based deployment we have a mid hall back hall network running on on satellite links and also on lease line media like ip mpls so this was uh, you know, uh, I would say a good challenge that we faced, which we solved uh, in the recent time. Is Rakuten Mobile using public cloud platforms in any way to support its network rollouts? Rakuten Mobile uh, network deployment in Japan, we are not using a uh, public cloud as such. Uh, we, uh, for Japan deployment specifically, we, we uh, are using our own private cloud for uh, which is based on kubernetes and very cloud native with support lots of uh, uh, good aspect of of kubernetes including microservices and and uh, uh, scaling uh, we uh, we feel that you know uh, having control all most of the operators globally want to have control over their network deployment not that uh, operators are are scared of of going to public cloud but uh, for better operational efficiencies and to have data security in place, it is a, a it is an approach that most of the operators are taking to to do private cloud based deployment to start with, and then moving to to the public cloud. However, we have developed a lot of applications in house 
including our OSS system, which help us do change management, configuration management, a lot of other ticketing management system for operations. Those are, are uh, completely uh, platform agnostic. Those can be deployed on any uh, public cloud, which we are doing under the new organization that we have built called Rakuten Symphony. In Rakuten Japan, we predominantly used our, uh, our private cloud. However, our, our applications are also working on, on public cloud for other service providers. Uh, now, in, in your opinion, where does the main focus of R&D need to be in the Open RAN community? Is it in the radio chipsets or maybe in the RAN intelligent controller evolution or, or maybe in the integration blueprints, perhaps? Uh, there is not one good answer for this specifically. All these areas are very, very important, uh, but I would, I would uh, take them on a different sequence. Silicon ecosystem, which is, as you, uh, you know, phrased it as radio chipset, it, it's basically silicon, silicon ecosystem, which has to evolve. Uh, right now, entire open run uh, architecture, open run technology is, is roaming around very few silicon providers, which, uh, who, who are the first runners uh, in this case, and, and they have, they have the edge of, of having uh, silicons uh, today, but we have seen a lot of other vendors, including Qualcomm, Marvel, they are also coming in. Uh, silicon vendors are definitely putting a lot of effort and uh, and money into developing chip, which will make Open RAN much more robust and much more cost effective. Uh, so, silicon ecosystem is definitely the most important part for to achieve the cost efficiencies that Open RAN, RAN promises. Second part is uh, the rig. RIC is, uh, is, is, is also very important for making uh, open RAN technology more autonomous. Uh, we have a publisher article specifically about autonomous network. Automation is a very integral part of, of open RAN, especially if you want to de deploy it with virtualization. Uh, there is a big difference between traditional way of deploying network and deploying network with open RAN and virtualization technology. AI and automation plays a very, very important and integral role uh, in that uh, approach. And RIC uh, definitely plays a, 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 a role which allow third party companies to bring in their capability of AI, machine learning and automation. So RIC uh, is equally important as for, for network operation. So silicon ecosystem is important for network build out. RIC ecosystem is, is uh, equally important for uh, efficiently operating the network and maintaining it in, in the long run. And the third most uh, important factor, the system integration. What we have done in Japan is uh, Rakuten Mobile itself has uh, taken over the responsibility of system integrator. Uh, this require a different uh, structure of organization. Traditional uh, CSP organization are built with, uh, with the SME mindset of, of telco technologies. However, when you adopt technologies like Open RAN, which are more IT centric, software centric, and and uh, you know make use of a lot of cloud technologies, it is important to uh, have those kind of skill set into the organization. So in Rakuten Mobile, we have diversified our uh, SME skill set. We have uh, people which are uh, SME in the in the radio domain and core domain, and at the same time, we have uh, people who are uh, who specialize in IT services, uh, cloud technologies, and automation. So uh, for Rakuten Mobile, we, we have this learning where we have played this uh, role of system integrator. But for a lot of other operator, especially the smaller one in, into uh, with a small cell site uh, or some small customer base or small geography with their covering, it may not be possible to quickly scale their organization with different skill set. So system integrator part definitely become very important. And also with increasing uh, vendor ecosystem, more radio vendors are coming in, more compute vendors are coming in, more layer one technologies are coming in. With, with this increasing ecosystem size, the role of system integrator is, is becoming very important. So R&D focus should definitely go into silicon ecosystem and RIC. And from uh, from business case perspective, system integrators' roles uh, role is is very important, but that's not where the R and D investment is going to happen.
Okay, great point, Sushil. Thank you. Uh, and finally, what's next for Rakuten Mobile with Open RAN? What can we expect to hear about in 2022? Uh, one very important uh, aspect that I covered in my previous uh, question also, uh, this uh, going outside Japan and taking responsibility of a service pro uh, a solution system integrator and an Open RAN solution provider. Right. So Rakuten Symphony is one of the announcements that we have made in the recent time. And this is uh, what we are going to do in, in next few years. Deploy end-to-end uh, -end networks with Open RAN and cloud technologies in various other geographies outside Japan with, with the help of uh, other operators who, who are, who are uh, interested in investing in Open RAN. So this is where we are heading now from Japan to the global market. Okay, fascinating times ahead, Sushil. There's no doubt that Rakuten Mobile has made the telecom industry in Japan and internationally much more exciting in the past couple of years. Thanks very much for joining us today and giving us an update on what is happening at Rakuten. Thank you. Thank you.